Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam ma ba'da habita fillah A question was asked and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ikhlas with the bat Ameen ya rabbil alameen A brother said assalamu alaikum Ustad I have a question concerning the fitna between the Salafis It is a very confusing issue for me as I see good and bad from both sides but if I find myself in a complex, but I find myself in a complex position, if I say that I listen to S pubs and Troy, that I'm labeled as a cultist, and if I say I listen to people on the other side of the spectrum, that I'm labeled as someone who listens to Ahl Bida, do you think it would be wise for me to just abandon all of these people to, altogether and take from the ulama directly? Jazakum Allah khair. Allah yubarik fiqh wa fakana wiyakum. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad. First and foremost, uh, with regards to the fitna between Ahl Sunnah that we see, and it's been going on for many years, so this is not new, but I think it's re reached a new height, and there's a recent backlash against some of those groups you you mentioned. Uh, first, one of the things I want to mention is is that you should be cautious of blind following anyone, and that it's very important to take your knowledge from those people who are known for adhering to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. And that, that you have sincerity to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and ask Him for guidance and ask Him to show you uh, the correct path. Secondly, that these issues are very confusing, especially for the youth, because they just want to practice and they might like listening to a particular individual who's known for the da'wah to Ahl Sunnah, but then other brothers from Ahl Sunnah bi Allah Ta'ala are refuting him. And not just refuting him with ilm. This is the problem. This is another thing you have to look at. When you see that people are making claims, are they knowledge-based claims? And do you have the tools to distinguish what is a knowledge-based claim and what is a, something that just sounds good and feels good? Because a lot of times it just feels good. If you hear somebody say, he is a uh, retard. He is, a, and, and I say this because there are, on the internet, there are people who are Salafi, who are known for the Tao, who say this. And, I, and I, we can bring it up right now on the, on the website. Who say this. And this is not knowledge-based. Even if this person is, even if this person is a tekfiri and this and this and this, it would be better if you use proper asloob, you will be effective in convincing the people uh, to stay away from that individual based on the Elm effect. But when you use this kind of language, this hyperbolic language, and when people read into the statements of other people, this is a very dangerous thing. It's dangerous for them because it's going to come back to them one way or another, in this dunya or in the akhirah, because you misread and misinterpreted and read into the intention of someone else, uh, and you gave them no husn al if they're from Ahl Sunnah and they're from Ahl Khayyam. Uh, so, my advice in general, as far as the fitna, is to, you don't have to tell anybody who you listen to. And I say that you listen to those who bring you benefit, number one. Number two, la shuk, no doubt, that if you have the ability to listen to the ulama, then that's where you should be. Khalas. This other stuff, and especially listening to, if you find some benefit from some brothers, they're teaching Kitab al-Tawheed, they're teaching some beneficial books. Benefit from those books, but if you see that they're also engaged in refutations that have no benefit, and destroy your heart, avoid that. Avoid those lessons from them, if you need to listen to them. Aslan. And I'll just tell you myself, since about 2000, uh, probably 2001, I stopped listening to English lectures. Uh, and, I, and I really was not, I can't say I've listened to more than now, only recently, because it's been sent to me through the social media, different brothers and what they're saying. Have I listened to, you know, an hour here, or other people that lead, need English, that they listen to those. But really, I found, and it was so much better for my heart, and I didn't know about so many people who have been taken off the Tao over these years, because I didn't go to those forums. Most of those forums were heart killers. This is what I found. So for me, because I had enough Arabic and I was improving, I was in the lessons of Bulugh Maram with my Sheikh. I was listening to even things I didn't understand. He let me be the reader for Shara Sunnah, Imam Babahari. I was taking it from the Sheikh. 
a student of Sheikh Ab uh, Abdullah Obeyland. So for me, that, w that, was, that was better for my heart. Instead of getting into the controversies that the Western students and die, some people who aren't even students of knowledge, are getting into and attacking and, and fighting about. That stuff will kill your heart. So my advice is, don't tell anybody who you listen to. That's not another business. If they say, do you listen to so-and-so? Just say, you know, I just try to benefit from the, from the ulama. Just tell them that and keep it pushing. Because if they're going to make empty hand of you and, and test you, then they're probably not even worth being around anyway. And I found that more of those people who wanted to test me and attack me because they disagreed with me, I found that I benefited more by being away from them than being with them. Because I found that they only spoke about matters and they didn't even seek knowledge. I can tell you uh, brothers' names who are Salafi, alhamdulillah, but are they Salafi based on really knowledge? They're not Talib al -ilm. But yet they will take you off the minhaj quick based on fatawa and based on vun. So, on suspicion. So this, my advice, is the atalab al -ilm, is seek knowledge. Learn the Arabic language, as I've told many of the people who listen to me for years. Seek knowledge, free yourself from a lot of this fitna and controversy, get tools so you can see how to deal with the fitna and controversy. It makes it more clear for you. And avoid it as much as possible. Sit with those ulama that, that don't even engage you in that, who are benefiting you and are going to strengthen your heart. Because ultimately it's with your heart. If you die and you've gotten involved in whether Troy is Salafi or not, whether this one is a, is a part of a cult or not, whether these guys have some traits of his or not, whether this one made empty hand of this one, whether Shadid Muhammad said this, whether uh, Abu Khadija said this, Bilal David said this, uh, Awais Tawil said this, uh, Abdullah said this, you know, so and so said this. You will you won't be able to seek knowledge. You won't benefit from your time. You you'll just be oh, you'll be wasting yourself, and it hurts the heart. My heart is not strong like that, so I can only speak for myself. And and I see for the, a lot of the dead people that I've met, <laughs> dead people, dead because they waste their time. They make tabdi of major mountains of knowledge because they have no knowledge. And they read a translation, and they made a hukum based off the translation on an alam rabbani. And I'm going to give you a real story. I came back to my locality in Seattle, Washington, many years ago. And this is the fitna of Fale al-Harbi. Okay? So, one of our mashayikh, actually Sheikh Obey, may Allah preserve him, he made a statement, and it was on Salafi Talk or Salafi Publication, one of those websites. And he said... And this is not to belittle the website, but I'm just saying this was it was there. They translated a statement that whoever says uh, Sheikh Obeid was defending Sheikh Fale at the time, whoever says about Sheikh Fale something something, he's an innovator. It was something like this, either an innovator or something. Very strong statement. Okay, uh, and may Allah forgive us and the Sheikh. And he made Taraja. He went away, took that statement back. Okay, and the brothers took that down many years ago. But the point is, so a brother in my locality does not know Arabic, not known for really Talib al -ilm, okay, but alhamdulillah he was Salafi and he was striving, you know, he was striving, but then he said to me about an Alam Rabbani Sheikh Abdul Masin al abad because Sheikh Abdul Masin had made a reputation at that time of Fali al-Harbi in his book, and this brother made a, a hukum on this Alam Rabbani, not knowing that this Alam Rabbani is teachers for those others, those others should be going back to that Alam Rabbani and Muhaddith, so this is, this is the problem, and this is the problem. People engage, subhanAllah, I've met people who are, don't pray properly, and they're asking me very intricate questions, and, you know, uh, but what if, you know, I said, I said the Salaf are, have more fadila than our ulama. Our ulama are great, we love them, and we love them, and, it, and as much as they adhere to Kitab al Sunnah. And this individual says, but what if they know better? I said, whoa, you don't know much about a soul. You need to focus on your Salat and get away from these issues. These issues are too big and they force you to say things which make no sense and have no religious basis. So this is this is the issue, Ahabitifillah, is that don't involve yourself in this stuff. Don't listen, don't even waste your time listening to the latest refutation here and this, because that stuff kills your heart. If you don't have the knowledge to be able to deal with that stuff and the strong heart, hopefully, to be able to deal with that stuff, Bottom line, if there's no benefit in it for you, then don't do it. 
and you're not obligated to tell the people what you're reading and listening to. And so my advice is stick with ulama. That's the best. That's the best. La shuk. You'll be safe. You'll be safe and you won't waste your time and you'll hopefully come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sallam.